China proper, Inner China or the Eighteen Provinces was a term used by Western writers on the Manchu Qing dynasty to express a distinction between the core and frontier regions of China. There is no fixed extent for China proper, as many administrative, cultural, and linguistic shifts have occurred in Chinese history. One definition refers to the original area of Chinese civilization, the Central Plain in the North China Plain, another to the 18 Provinces system of the Qing dynasty. There is no direct translation for China proper in the Chinese language due to differences in terminology used by the Qing to refer to the regions, and the expression is controversial among scholars, particularly in China, due to national territorial claims. Origin of the concept It is not clear when the concept of China proper in the Western world appeared. However, it is plausible that historians during the Age of Empires and the fast-changing borders in the 18th century, applied it to distinguish China's 18 provinces from its newly acquired properties. This would also apply to Great Britain proper versus the British Empire, which would encompass vast lands overseas. The same would apply to France proper in contrast to the French Empire of the time, which Napoleon managed to expand all the way to Moscow. According to Harry Harding, the concept can date back to 1827. But as early as in 1795, William Winterbotham adopted this concept in his book. When describing the Chinese Empire under the Qing dynasty, Winterbotham divided it into three parts, China proper, Chinese Tartary, and the states tributary to China. He adopted the opinions of Duhald and Grosier and suspected that the name of China came from Qin dynasty. He then said, China, properly so called comprehends from north to south 18 degrees, its extent from east to west being somewhat less." However, to introduce China proper, Winterbotham still used the outdated 15-province system of the Ming dynasty, which the Qing dynasty used until 1662. Although Ming Dynasty also had 15 basic local divisions, Winterbotham uses the name of Qiang Nan, Zhang Nan Jiangnan province, which had been called Nan Jili, Nan Jili, Nan Jili during the Ming Dynasty and was renamed to Qiang Nan i.e. in 1645, the second year after the Manchu Qing Dynasty overthrew the Ming. This 15 province system was gradually replaced by the 18 province system between 1662 and 1667. Using the 15 province system and the name of Qiang Nan province indicates that the concept of China proper probably had appeared between 1645 and 1662 and this concept may reflect the idea that identifies China as the territory of the former Ming dynasty after the Qing conquest of the Ming. The concept of ''China proper'' also appeared before this 1795 book. It can be found in the Gentleman's Magazine, published in 1790, and the Monthly Review, published in 1749. In the 19th century, the term, ''China proper'' was sometimes used by Chinese officials when they were communicating in foreign languages. For instance, the Qing ambassador to Britain Zheng Jis used it in an English language article, which he published in 1887. Dalimbai Gurun is the Manchu name for China, Zhangguo Zhangguo, Middle Kingdom. After conquering the Ming, the Manchu Qing identified their state as China, Zongguo, and referred to it as Dalimbai Gurun in Manchu. The Manchu Qing emperors equated the lands of the Qing state, including both China proper and present-day Manchuria, Xinjiang, Mongolia, Tibet, and other areas as China. In both the Chinese and Manchu languages, defining China as a multi-ethnic state, rejecting the idea that China only meant Han areas in. China proper, proclaiming that both Han and non Han peoples were part of China, using China to refer to the Qing in official documents, international treaties, and foreign affairs, and the Chinese language referred to Chinese, Manchu, and Mongol languages, and the term Chinese people. Zhang Guo Ren Zhangguo Ren, Manchu, Dalimbai Gurun I Nayalma referred to all Han, Manchus, and Mongol subjects of the Qing. When the Qing conquered Dzungaria in 1759, they proclaimed that the new land was absorbed into China Dalimbai Gurun in a Manchu language memorial. The Qing expounded on their ideology that they were bringing together the outer non Han Chinese like the Inner Mongols, Eastern Mongols, Orat Mongols, and Tibetans together with the inner. Han Chinese, into 
one family united in the Qing state, showing that the diverse subjects of the Qing were all part of one family. The Qing used the phrase, Zhang Wai Yi Jia, Zhang Wai Yi Jia, or Nei Wai Yi Jia, Nei Wai Yi Jia, interior and exterior as one family, to convey this idea of unification of the different peoples. A Manchu language version of a treaty with the Russian Empire concerning criminal jurisdiction over bandits called people from the Qing as people of the Central Kingdom in the Manchu official Tulisan's Manchu language account of his meeting with the Torgut Mongol leader Ayuki Khan, it was mentioned that while the Torguts were unlike the Russians, the people of the Central Kingdom were like the Torgut Mongols, and the people of the Central Kingdom referred to the Manchus, while the Manchu Qing sought used China to describe non Han areas. However, some Han scholar officials opposed the Qing Manchu emperor use of Zongguo to refer to non-Han areas, using Zongguo to mark a distinction between the culturally Han Chinese areas and the territory newly brought into the Manchu Qing Empire. In the early 19th century, Wei Yuan's Shengwuji Military History of the Qing Dynasty calls the Inner Asian polities Guo, while the 17 provinces of the traditional heartland, that is, China proper, and three eastern provinces of Manchuria are called Zongguo. Some Han Chinese Ming loyalists refused to use Zongguo to refer to areas outside the borders of the Ming Empire such as Outer Mongolia, in effect refusing to acknowledge the Qing state. The Manchu Qing referred to the Han Chinese inhabited 18 provinces as Nidi Shiba Sheng, Nei De Shiba Sheng, which meant the Interior Region 18 Provinces, or abbreviated it as Nidi, Nei De Interior Region, and also as Junxian while they referred to the non-Han areas of China such as the Northeast, Outer Mongolia, Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Tibet as Waifan, wai fan which means outer feudatories, or outer vassals, or as Fanbu, Fanbu, feudatory region. These Waifan were fully subjected to and governed by the Qing government and were considered part of the China Zongguo, unlike Waiguo, wai outer foreign countries like Korea, Vietnam, and the Ryukyus, who paid tribute to the Qing but were not part of China. <inaudible> Modern Today, China proper is a controversial concept in China itself, since the current official paradigm does not contrast the core and the periphery of China. There is no single widely used term corresponding to it in the Mandarin language. The separation of China into a China proper, dominated by Han Chinese and one or more other Chinas of ethnic minorities, impugns on the legitimacy of China's current borders, which is based on the succession of states principle. According to Sinologist Colin McCarris, foreign governments have generally accepted Chinese claims over its minority areas, because to redefine a country, territory every time it underwent a change of regime would cause endless instability and warfare. Also, he asks, "...if the boundaries of the Qing were considered illegitimate, why should it go back to the much smaller Ming in preference to the quite extensive Tang dynasty boundaries?" Extent <inaudible> 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 There is no fixed extent for China proper, as it is used to express the contrast between the core and frontier regions of China from multiple perspectives, historical, administrative, cultural, and linguistic. Historical perspective One way of thinking about China proper is to refer to ancient Han Chinese dynasties. Chinese civilization developed from a core region in the North China Plain, and expanded outwards over several millennia, conquering and assimilating surrounding peoples, or being conquered and influenced in turn. Some dynasties, such as the Han and Tang dynasties, were particularly expansionist, extending far into Central Asia, while others, such as the Jin and Song dynasties, were forced to relinquish the North China Plain itself to rivals from Northeastern and Central Asia. The Ming dynasty was the last Han Chinese dynasty and second last imperial dynasty to rule China. 
It governed 15 administrative entities, which included 13 provinces Chinese, Bu Zheng Shi Si Pinyin, Bu Zheng Shi Si and two «directly governed» areas. After the Manchu-founded Qing dynasty succeeded the Ming dynasty, the Qing court decided to continue to use the Ming administrative system to rule over former Ming lands, without applying it to other domains within the Qing dynasty, namely Manchuria, Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Tibet. The fifteen administrative units of the Ming dynasty underwent minor reforms to become the eighteen provinces, Yi Shi Ba Xing Sheng Yi Shi Ba Xing Sheng, or Shi Ba Sheng, Shi Ba Sheng of China proper under the Qing dynasty. It was these 18 provinces that early Western sources referred to as China proper. There are some minor differences between the extent of Ming China and the extent of the 18 provinces of Qing China, for example, some parts of Manchuria were a Ming possession belonging to the Ming province of Laodong however, the Qing conquered it before the rest of China and did not put the region back into the provinces of China proper. On the other hand, Taiwan was a new acquisition of the Qing dynasty, and it was put into Fujian, one of the provinces of China proper. Eastern Kham in Greater Tibet was added to Sichuan, while much of what now constitutes northern Burma was added to Yunnan. Near the end of the Qing dynasty, there was an effort to extend the province system of China proper to the rest of the empire. Taiwan was made into a separate province in 1885, but was ceded to Japan in 1895. Xinjiang was reorganized into a province in 1884. Manchuria was split into the three provinces of Fengtian, Jilin and Heilongjiang in 1907. There was discussion to do the same in Tibet, Kokonor, Inner Mongolia, and Outer Mongolia, but these proposals were not put to practice, and these areas were outside the province system of China proper when the Qing dynasty fell in 1912. The provinces of the Qing dynasty were some of the revolutionaries who sought to overthrow Qing rule desired to establish a state independent of the Qing dynasty within the bounds of the 18 provinces, as evinced by the 18 star flag they used. Others favored the replacement of the entire Qing dynasty by a new republic, as evinced by the five striped flag they used. Some revolutionaries, such as Zhou Rong, used the term Zhongguo Benbu, Zhongguo Benbu which roughly identifies the 18 provinces. When the Qing dynasty fell, the abdication decree of the Qing emperor bequeathed the entire empire to the newborn Republic of China, and the latter idea was therefore adopted by the new republic as the principle of five races under one union, with five races referring to the Han Chinese, Manchus, Mongols, Muslims Uyghurs, Wei etc., and Tibetans. The five-striped flag was adopted as the national flag, and the Republic of China viewed itself as a single state encompassing all five regions handed down by the Qing dynasty. The People's Republic of China, which was founded in 1949 and replaced the Republic of China on the mainland, has continued to claim essentially the same borders, with the only major exception being the recognition of independent Mongolia. As a result, the concept of China proper fell out of favor in China. The 18 provinces of the Qing dynasty still exist, but their boundaries have changed. Beijing and Tianjin were eventually split from Hebei renamed from Zhili, Shanghai from Jiangsu, Chongqing from Sichuan, Ningxia Autonomous Region from Gansu, and Hainan from Guangdong. Guangxi is now an autonomous region. The provinces that the late Qing dynasty set up have also been kept. Xinjiang became an autonomous region under the People's Republic of China, while the three provinces of Manchuria now have somewhat different borders, with Fengtian renamed as Liaoning. When the Qing dynasty fell, Republican Chinese control of Qing territory, including of those generally considered to be in China proper, was tenuous, and practically non existent in Tibet and Outer Mongolia since 1922, which were controlled by governments that declared independence. The Republic of China subdivided Inner Mongolia in its time on the mainland, although the People's Republic of China later joined Mongol inhabited territory into a single autonomous region. The PRC joined the Komdo area into the Tibet area later the Tibet Autonomous Region. Nationalist China was forced to acknowledge the independence of Mongolia former Outer Mongolia and Tanu Yuriankai now part of Russia as the Taiva Republic, in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnic perspective China proper is often associated with the Han Chinese, the majority ethnic group of China and with the extent of the Chinese languages, an important unifying element of the Han Chinese ethnicity. 
However, Han Chinese areas in the present day do not correspond well to the 18 provinces of the Qing dynasty. Much of southwestern China, such as areas in the provinces of Yunnan, Guangxi, and Guizhou, was part of successive Han Chinese dynasties, including the Ming dynasty and the 18 provinces of the Qing dynasty. However, these areas were and continue to be populated by various non-Han Chinese minority groups, such as the Zhuang, the Miao people, and the Baoye. Conversely, today Han Chinese form the majority in most of Manchuria, much of Inner Mongolia, many areas in Xinjiang and scattered parts of Tibet, not least due to the expansion of Han Chinese settlement encouraged by the late Qing dynasty, the Republic of China, and the People's Republic of China. Ethnic Han Chinese is not synonymous with speakers of the Chinese language. Many non-Han Chinese ethnicities, such as the Wei and Manchu, are essentially monolingual in Chinese, but do not identify as Han Chinese. The Chinese language itself is also a complex entity, and should be described as a family of related languages rather than a single language if the criterion of mutual intelligibility is used to classify its subdivisions. In polls a slim majority of the people of Taiwan call themselves Taiwanese, only with the rest identifying as Taiwanese and Chinese, or Chinese only. 98% of the people of Taiwan are descendants of immigrants from China since the 1600s, but the inclusion of Taiwan in China, or in the China proper, is still a controversial subject. See History of Taiwan and Political Status of Taiwan for more information. See also Annam Chinese world Greater China Mainland China Metropole North China Plain Inner Asia Outer Mongolia Outer Manchuria Qing Dynasty in Inner Asia Sinocentrism Zhonghua Minzu Chinese macro regions — socioeconomic divisions of China proper Willow Palisade Great Wall of China Notes References Citations Sources Topic. Castle, Par Christopher 2012. Grounds of Judgment, Extraterritoriality and Imperial Power in Nineteenth-Century China and Japan Illustrated ed., Oxford University Press. ISBN 0199792054. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Duhald, Jean-Baptiste The General History of China. Containing a geographical, historical, chronological, political and physical description of the Empire of China, Chinese Tartary, Korea and Thibet London, J. Watts. Grozier, Jean-Baptiste A General Description of China. Containing the topography of the fifteen provinces which compose this vast empire, that of Tartary, the Isles, and other tributary countries London, G. G. J. and J. Robinson. Darby, William Darby's Universal Gazetteer, or, A New Geographical Dictionary. Illustrated by a Map of the United States p. 154. Philadelphia, Bennett and Walton. Dvorak, Rudolf China's Religion and Volume 12, Volume 15 of Darstellungen aus dem Gebiet der Nichtchristlichen Religionsgeschichte Illustrated ed. Aschendorf Druck und Verlag der Aschendorfschen Buchhandlung. ISBN 0199792054. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Dunnell, Ruth W., Elliot, Mark C., Fort, Philippe, Millward, James A. 2004. New Qing Imperial History, The Making of Inner Asian Empire at Qing Chengdu. Routledge. ISBN 1134362226. Rutledge, Ian M. 1980. 
Elliott, Mark C. 2001. The Manchu Way: The Eight Banners and Ethnic Identity in Late Imperial China. Illustrated, reprint ed. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0804746842. Retrieved the 10th of March 2014. Hauer, Eric. 2007. Korf, Oliver, ed. Handwerterbuch der Manchusprache. Volume 12, Volume 15 of Darstellungen aus dem Gebiet der Nichtchristlichen Religionsgeschichte. Illustrated ed. Otto Harrisowitz Verlag. ISBN 3447055286. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Purdue, Peter C. 2009. China Marches West: The Qing Conquest of Central Eurasia. Reprint ed. Harvard University Press. ISBN 0674042026. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Wu, Shui. 1995. Die Eroberung von Qinghai unter Berücksichtigung von Tibet und Kam 1717-1727, Anhand der Throningaben des Grossfeldherrn Yen Zhengyao. Volume 2 of Tunguso Sibirica. Otto Harrisowitz Verlag. ISBN 3447037563. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Zhao, Gang. January 2006. Reinventing China, Imperial Qing Ideology and the Rise of Modern Chinese National Identity in the Early 20th Century. PDF, 32. No. 1. Sage Publications. Doi 10.1177/00977004052823439. JSTOR 20062627. Archived from the original on the 25th of March 2014. Retrieved the 23rd of May 2014. Topic: External links. Topic. China the Catholic Encyclopedia Photographic Survey of Outer China